up, everybody? We're back here again at the Gramercy Theater. We just interviewed the Strays earlier, and that was a phenomenal time in this room. Except now, I'm sitting on the big comfy couch with, of course, Marissa Ann on my left. Yellow. There you go. And, of course, to my right, Elliot from Good Tiger. Elliot, how you doing right now? Fantastic. Just got off stage, and uh, I got some a la carte, and I'm feeling, yeah, I'm feeling wonderful. That's, that's all you need. Every time at Gramercy, all you need is that cart. That cart is godsend over here in this neighborhood. Either that or 7-Eleven or, you know, anything I can snack on up until I got to go up there. Exactly. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm the unlucky one in the band that can't really eat a ton of food until afterwards. Uh, you and me both, except I don't do what you do up there, which is phenomenal. I need oh. to improve severely. Yeah. But well, we definitely want to congratulate you on We Will All Be Gone. Um, Thank you. Just the hard work that the band put into it and everything like that. Um, I guess one of my first questions is, uh, so, you know, Good Tiger is a Black Media's debut band. What's the backstory on how that partnership formed, and what is the relationship between Good Tiger, Blacklight Media, and Metal Blade Records in the recording process? Well, our first album was completely crowdfunded. Um, we didn't we didn't have a label, um, and I don't really know if at any point we were really looking for one um, until Blacklight reached out to us, and uh, it seemed really cool because they were like a brand new label, and at the time we were still super brand new band. And we talked to the owner, Chris Santos, who's a, like, a really famous chef, actually. Um, yes, he is. Hey, Chris. <laughs> um, and uh, he just seemed like a really, really awesome guy. And he really had a lot of nice things to say about the band. And it was, it, 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 it was, it was really, it was, I, I, hate, I almost kind of feel weird saying it, but the word magical <laughs> when we met him. And like he was, he, he was a really awesome guy to talk to. And he seemed so excited about the band, which is why it just kind of naturally... You know, he, he was the only one we ever talked to, and yeah, uh, it, yeah it came it came together pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, were you were you happier doing the uh, crowdfunding campaign? I mean, after, once the, the, you know, to build up the album, um, it was stressful for sure. You know, because if you raise no money, then you d don't then really you get have no a, album. Then you have no <laughs> band. But um, uh, aside from the stress of actually launching it, it was uh, a cool experience for sure. I mean. The reason we got to play tonight's show all started because of that, of that crowdfunding. I mean, the fans brought it to the stage for sure, like without question. And, that, and that's phenomenal to hear. Uh, that it, that it, really is. Yeah, not 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 a lot of bands are that fortunate, and we got we're one of the luckier ones for sure. Swing. And so, um, as the first band to join Blacklight Media and being signed to Metal Blade Records, with your eclectic style of music being progressive, alternative, and pop rock. Um, how do you view your experience with being surrounded by the heavier artists on that roster? And how does it feel knowing that your music can open doors for similar bands like Good Tiger on Blacklight Media? Um, well, so, like, uh, Blacklight is a subsidiary of Metal Blade. Um, and when I was 18 years old, uh, I had the Metal Blade box set. So, um, <laughs> and I didn't really grow up listening to metal too much. But this was, like, old school metal, like 80s stuff. Right. So. I remember there was a DVD that came with that box set with Brian Slagle, the owner, talking about how he only signs bands that he loves. Um, Hi, Brian. Uh, yeah, hey, Brian. And um, <laughs> he only like he just seemed like a real down to earth guy, just like Chris, you know. Um, and I was a fan of the label, like you know, 15 years before I would ever know I would somehow be a part of it. Um, to stick out like a sore thumb on the label in terms of our style, uh, I think it's great. Um, Certainly, there are some die-hard metal fans that might lurk into the comments on YouTube and kind of, you know, raise an eyebrow. But for the most part, I think it's, I think it's refreshing for their audience uh, in some ways. Um, yeah, you guys are pioneers, pretty much. You're the pioneers of of Blacklight. I mean, as being, oh yeah, the ones in, in of your genre and your niche. You know, you you really do stand out. And I like the. I also. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I uh, cut you off. No, it's, uh, I. I just like the fact that not every single one of their bands sounds like another. Um, maybe they sound a little bit more alike if you throw us in the mix, but you know they have a diverse enough roster for sure. Um, and I would say we're probably, you know, a little bit in left field. Um, but you know, when you're treated as well as you are by them. Uh, even if their audience didn't like us, <laughs> I'd, I'd still be happy. Absolutely. Uh, no, I, yeah, we definitely hit you on that one. I mean, do you, do you feel that uh, 
the variety of you guys, you know, standing out with all the other bands that are on your roster, do you feel that, you know, that's that's something rare in this label, in this, you know, subsidiary as compared to other record labels? Um, I'll say no only because we were the first signing. Um, and uh, I don't, uh, you know, I think Chris is just, I, he's, he's a metalhead for sure. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he still does sign bands that he likes. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me if he signed a band that was even way more removed than what he normally listens to just because he's a fan. Um, right now, yeah, I, I, we, stay, we stick out, but not too much. So, you know, and hopefully we won't be... The, uh, the last of like the bands that stick out on his yeah, on his your, roster. Your first album was like I mean, it was pretty technical for I remember, uh, the debut uh, Good Tiger's debut album, and then hearing um, "We Will All Be Gone," I was like, "Wow, this is a, re- <laughs> a bit of a change." I, mean, I was expecting like, "Yeah, really, I'm gonna mosh in my room right now," and it was just so chill and relaxed. But I loved it. It was a really Thank good you. progression. I don't think any of us really knew what to expect from our own second album. Um, the first album came together pretty quickly, but. Once we actually got into a room and and wrote together, it it the, the songs that came out for "We Will All Be Gone" are mm-hmm. the ones that came out, and we really found our voice for that. Absolutely. Um, well, so how did you tie yourself on writing and recording uh, on the writing and recording dynamic with everyone joining the band from different non projects? Well, the main songwriter is is Dex. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to the instrumentals, um, I'm the primary, you know, vocal and lyric writer. But I do take ideas from some of the other guys if they ever have an idea. Um, and when it comes to Dez's instrumentals, um, he is very open to changes, uh, suggestions. Um, but he's the vehicle that steers that. So uh, what was exactly the question? Uh, well, I mean, it, how did you guys decide on like the recording and the writing dynamic? Like what, coming from like uh, like... Oh. Like large, like you know, no, well-known bands, like from, but you know, different bands. Um, you know what? Honestly, whatever, I guess Des is feeling, and and writing at the moment is kind of what we go off of, and then you know, uh, you just take everything from there. Yeah, pretty much. He, okay. I mean, it always starts with an idea that he'll have. Okay, um, so he's the Matthew McConaughey, and you guys are the Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, okay, I like the sound of that. All right. Um, and I mean, he's somebody that I would say he probably wrote more in a style that he wanted to write for the second album, for sure. Um, I mean, we all have influences that go well beyond the bands we used to be in. Um, and uh, I think they sh- they shine through on, on the album, on the on the, the newer one. And, um, well, I guess I, I, this is primarily a question for you. Um, were there any ideas that you never got to work on while in, like, while, like, tour? I guess, you, did, were you, you were touring with Tesseract, right? They did oh. one tour. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, one tour. I did, well, I did one U.S. tour sure. and then two over in, I did two and a half, kind of, three tours. Um, but I was only in the band for uh, a little less than a year. Right. Well, well I was wondering, actually, um, you know, were there any ideas that, like, while you were there um, that you were able to bring over to Good Tiger? No, 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 no. no. I, I only even, I mean. No, I mean, if, if in all honesty, Tesseract was, if you really look at it, I mean, I was like officially a member, but I kind of look at it now as more of, I was just a fill-in okay. because I didn't actually get to writing anything with them. Um, I worked on like one little idea. Um, which for their album that became Altered State, but then I left pretty much right after that. Yeah, that's when that's when Ash O'Hara came in. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but that was not a style I was very good at. Um, so uh, no, I I wouldn't have brought it, a, any of those over yeah, here. I was, I, mean, I was curious. I was wondering if you were like putting in, like had any input while you were there for the short time that you were there. No, not not, not really. Oh, okay. uh, I tried I tried demoing one song, and I think there was like a lot of screaming on it. <laughs> <laughs> And that that they clearly didn't take any of those ideas either. So, I, I'm actually curious. Uh, do you um, ever have the possibility of touring with them? Uh, you know, Good Tiger Tesseract together on the same bill. If they offered us a tour, I, I'm sure we'd consider it because we're all friends. So, uh, uh, it, it it would be one thing if it was like, 
like a really bad ending, and I was like, like well, yeah. no, screw those guys. But Th no, that's I mean, something I don't expect from you know from either party. So I mean, you know, I, but it, as my first time seeing him perform tonight, this is this is something that I would love to see. So I was curious to you know find your response about that. I I, I mean, yeah, I. I still see some of those guys every once in a while. I mean, obviously, they live over there. I live yeah. here. Um, I still talk to Ackle and Dan very regularly. Nice. The most. Um, and if they offered us a tour, I'm 100% sure we'd consider it. And, you know, if we could make it work. <laughs> well, like ex that excuse me one second. Yes. All right. Um, so um, I have a, uh, also a question about um, more guest vocals and, you know, um, so you actually did guest vocals with Mark and Misha of Peripheries uh, Project Conte Shores mm -hmm. for their, one of their tracks was um, My The Man. And you had an impeccable combination of like harsh and melodic vocals. I, I really wish I could redo that one, by the way. Which you, one? My The Man. Oh, redo it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like re I love it. I love Immaterial more. Oh, yeah. I, I like mean, I like yeah, their I like what they did too. with it, but I, I feel like I could do a much I know, better job. I know there's something just a for me for my the man. I guess okay, I'm like glad you like it. <laughs> but um, you know, I guess I'm, and I guess like many would like to know like when when you when did you begin singing and how long did it take for you to perfect such an incredibly like high vocal range? Because you know I'm just kind of sitting here a little jealous, like wow. <laughs> um, I've probably been singing since I was like, ten, but um taking it seriously and really trying to like learn how to sing um when i was like 21 22 um misha mansoor of periphery is a, like a close friend of mine i've known him a long time and we were writing some songs together and i would sing over some of it kind of just demoing stuff out and, he, and he's really one of the first people to encourage me to take that real seriously so i'd have to credit him for pushing me in that direction Thank you, Misha Periphery. Yeah, thank you, you for that. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, so, uh, which song on "Will We Will uh, We Will All Be Gone" um, did the band find most challenging to write? Uh, how would you compare the writing for the new album to the debut album, uh, "Head Full of Moonlight"? Um, I'd say the writing and recording, and just all the ideas for "We Will All Be Gone," was pretty seamless and pretty easy, to be honest. Um, but the hardest one to sing and deliver is Salt of the Earth for me. That's a very tough song. Which one is it? Uh, Salt of the Earth. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, I don't want to say it's my least favorite in the set because it is fun, Ooh. but it is the one where it comes at the end of the set and I'm like, oh, God, here it comes. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to think, uh, compared to the last album, I, r I tried to read... I'm not an intellect or anything, but I tried to read a lot of books before going into uh, the writing for the last album, just so I could have some fresh lyrics and fresh ideas. Um, the first album, when I was contacted by Des to, you know, hey, let's start a new band, he was already starting to work on songs. So I had a lot of songs I had to write for really quickly. Um, so that was, that I would say that was tougher than this one. Because I came I, way more prepared for, well, for I mean, what, what, what kind of deadline do you have? Like, how long did you have to actually write these songs? Well, we, did, we actually didn't have a deadline, which is why it took a year for the album to come out. Right, okay. Because we delivered an album that they they weren't going to put out because we were still on our first uh, You were still cycle. on the first cycle. The first yeah, cycle. Yeah. Um, in retrospect, maybe, like, Instagramming and tweeting that we were writing a new thing might not have been smart just because... It gave people false hope that it was coming out a lot sooner than it was, but um, oh. yeah, but I mean it wasn't like a negative thing. It was just kind of like people were thinking like, is there something wrong with the label? Did they have to go back and re-record or change things? It's like no, it's just we finished it a year before we had to turn it in. <laughs> <laughs> we had plenty of time. Yeah, but that's all. That's uh, the excitement of getting that done. I mean, I'm sure, you know. Yeah, by the time it finally came out, I had heard it a million times and was sick of listening to it. <laughs> A uh, quick question about, um, you know, you being on stage. I mean, what kind of equipment do you use, as, like, when you're on stage singing, um, like, as far as, like, your, you know, your microphones uh, or your in-ears? Um, I was using Shure for a long time um, and not really happy with the sound I was getting. Um, although I don't really think it had anything to do with the microphone. I think it's just the way I sing. So I switched over on the beginning of our headliner to the Telefunken M80 microphone. And it has, like, absolutely changed my life. Um, I mean, everybody 
that I'm friends with that have seen us live have noticed a huge difference in yeah. just how much better I'm sounding. That no, has nothing to do with Shure. I'm not saying it's no, an... It's in, yeah, it's just, yeah, we blame Shure for everything yeah. wrong. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. He's definitely got a preference. I, you know, I mean, a lot of people who actually like your music and, you know, um, you know, are influenced by your vocals would definitely take that into consideration yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah, Telefunken really helps with those highs. I mean, it, it goes from so low to so high that it, it handles it all, so... And um, so I guess we're going to wrap this up and get into our final question. Um, what will Good Tiger be up, up to after touring with Protest the Hero? Who are, by the way, on stage right now. So if you're wondering what the hell is going on for the past 15 it's minutes, <laughs> it's them. They're all upstairs along with 600 people. And they're killing it, too, as yeah. always. Yeah. <laughs> um, but afterwards, uh, I think it's a pretty standard stock answer. We will continue to tour and eventually write something new. So since this, uh, as I clearly heard on stage, as I clean my ears out, you did say this is your favorite place to play. I'd say, well, the city in general is my favorite place to play. So um, are you coming back? To, to the Gramercy? Uh, well, no, I mean just to New York. Oh, yeah. I, 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 think, I think if you count one-offs and uh, like the, uh, the Blacklight Media label yeah. thing that we did, um, I'd have to say we've played in New York more than any place in the world i mean or you know we've only really played in europe and uh in america but um in canada but i new york city i'm pretty sure is has the most good tiger shows under its belt and that, that makes me happy to know now because i'll be here again for the second time when and you guys come back i'm sure we both will be and there. it's right down the street from my house too so it's <laughs> yeah. not too bad. we're neighbors <laughs> Oh, we love you here. Um, we love Good Tiger here. We love you here, Elliot. And, you know, thank you so much for sitting here and uh, talking with us. No worries. Thanks for thanks for interviewing me. I Absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. And we will uh, it was a pleasure. Soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's going to be a couple of beers that we're about to unravel and open right now. So, again, thanks for stopping by. It's Marissa Ann. And, of course, Elliot from Good Tiger. Thank be you. sure to catch their uh, album, We Will All Be Gone. And in two seconds, we are about to get off this couch and be gone. So, catch you guys later. Bye-bye.